our speaker for today for session one, the 101 on COVID-19 basic information is our uh, current medical director. At the same time, she is an infectious diseases specialist to so no less than, of course, Dr. Kate Lady Tanya. So take it away, Dr. Kate. Hello, magandang tanghali sa ating lahat. Happy quarantine to everybody. So today I will share with you the 101 on COVID-19. So today is a one-on-one -on, -one on a very unstable topic. Unstable kasi nagbabago siya araw-araw. So yung mga guidelines na pinapakita namin is really interim, which means for now. Maaring magbago bukas. Okay? But I am uh, happy to share that um, some of the things I'm going to uh, show you today are from the latest guide guidelines from PSMID or PISMID, which was it just fresh out of the oven. So I'd like to acknowledge uh, my colleagues, King Birdies and Maris, because some of the slides I borrowed from them and the PISMID COVID guidelines team. So the scope of today's lecture will include history and epidemiology of COVID or um, SARS to coronavirus, uh, transmission, clinical features, diagnostics, and therapeutics. So take note, we have a separate session on prevention, which is very important. So kung ano man ang mga issues natin with regards to how not to get COVID, Let's spark that for the lecture with Dr. Jello kasi isang buong topic talaga siya. Okay? So let's begin. So, ito na. <clears throat> Alam ko, ito yung pinaka-interesting lang dito is sa nagsimula ang lahat. Um, we all know about this because it is in the news every day, but let me give you some local context. So, itong bagong virus na to, which was initially, but not supposed to be called Wuhan pneumonia, began in... Wuhan in the province of Hubei in China in December 1, actually, 2019. December 31, ni report ito sa WHO country office. Um, locally, on January 30, 2020, the Philippine Department of Health reported the first case of COVID-19 in our country with a 38-year-old female Chinese national from Wuhan mismo. She arrived in Manila from Hong Kong on January 21. Yung first death outside of China is ours, which occurred on February 1, which is patient number 2. Siya yung companion ni patient number 1. Tapos, one month, wala tayong kaso until March 1. Ay, sorry, March 6. I remember I even messaged my... Uh, my sisters na parang dito sa Pilipinas tahimik. So far, so good. Tapos biglang the next day, ayan na. So one month tayong walang kaso until March 6. Meron tayong first Filipino case. Patient number 4. I think, mabas din siya sa news today. I mean, nung mga nakaraang araw, to share his story, siya ay isang male who came from Japan. <clears throat> On March 7, yun yung ating first local transmission. Ito si patient number 5. Siya ay isang 62-year-old male with no travel history. So, wala siyang epidemiologic link. So, dun tayo mag na, oh, local transmission na. So, he frequented a Muslim prayer hall in San Juan. His wife also contracted COVID-19 on March 7. After mangyari yun, kasi meron na tayong evidence of local transmission, nag-impose na si ating DOH ng Public Health Emergency Code Red Sub-Level 1. So, ano sabihin nito? Ibig sabihin nun, dapat na mag-procure si DOH ng safety gear at mag-impose ng quarantine measures. So, March 7 yun na. March 12, Code Red Sub-Level 2. Ang nangyari, partial lockdown on Metro Manila hanggang April 12. Ngunit, i-extend yata ito ng April 15, tatlong araw na. Ah, March, ano to? Basta may extension, hindi ko na maalala. Yun. So, March 17, uh, the government declared a state of calamity for six months. On March 25, the Bayanihan to Heal Aswan Act was signed. Acronym ay baho. So, yan ang history from China at ang relevant history ng Pilipinas. 
next that in. Okay, so before we move on, I, it is important to know that we have now new case definitions for surveillance. Dati meron tayong TUI, TUM, mild, genus, genus, and COVID positive. Ngayon, ang new classification ayon sa ating interim guidelines ng PSMID dated March 31, we only have a non-COVID case a possible case. So, ang possible case ay isang tao na may exposure, may contact, pero walang symptoms. So, para siyang PUM, di ba? Walang symptoms, pero may exposure. Possible case ang tawag doon. Tapos, COVID suspect, mild yun. And then, COVID probable with inconclusive or inadequate or no available testing. Tapos, continue. Gets? So, yun yung bagong terms na gagamitin nyo, ha? Hindi na yung PUI, PUM. Okay. Ayan. So, let's talk about epidemiology. So, maganda itong um, uh, world surveillance system, global surveillance system ng Johns Hopkins University. So, isa ito sa pinakaginagamit maliban dun sa, I think, um, worldnumbers.com yata yun. So, ito, sinasabi niya yung total confirmed. Ito, as of this morning, ito, we now have 782,365 confirmed cases of COVID-19. At ang pinakamarami dito ay ang US, sumunod Italy, and then Spain. Nalampasan na nila ang ating OG, the OG, China. There have been, unfortunately, 37,582 total number of people who have died na confirmed cases. Ang magandang balita ay marami-rami din ang recovered. So, pag sinabing recovered, ito yung mga nag-negative na sa repeat swab. Okay? At umukay na sila. Naka-discharge na sila. Okay. Sa Pilipinas, meron din tayong mapang ganyan. Nakukuha mo yan sa ncovtracker.gov.ph Parang Johns Hopkins din ang layout niya. So, dito makikita natin ang ating total number of confirmed PUI, PUM. I'll show you later, no? Tapos, iisa-isa natin ito yung mga graphs na nandito. So, kita natin itong nasa gitna. Very uh, malaki talaga ang uh, contribution ng NCR. So, if you think about it, magandang desisyon na mag-lockdown yung NCR. Dahil kailangan natin i-prevent yung transmission sa ibang lugar. Okay. So, i-compare natin naman ang trend natin sa ibang bansa. So, di ba kanina nakita natin yung mga top three countries, US, Italy, and Spain. Ito tayo. So, ang question is, papunta ba tayo dito? We cannot tell as of this time. Bakit? Kasi ngayon pa lang tayo nagkakaroon ng ramp up in our testing. So, I think by April 1, or 5. I'm, uh, April 5, magiging commercially available na yung locally developed test kits ni ng, um, ng medtech. Health tech? Health tech, tama, sorry. Health tech ni Dr. Destuda. So, we may see an even higher number of cases. So, itong red line na to, this is very inconclusive because sobrang dami natin hindi tinetest. Kung nasasyak kayo sa numbers natin ngayon, wala pa yan. Okay? Because I believe there are a lot more cases. Ayan na. Ito yung confirmed. So we have 1,546 confirmed cases. Ito yung mga naswab. PUIs, the former definition, ito yung mga symptomatic na merong exposure or epidemiologic link. Either wala pang swab result or hindi na swab. PUMs are those with an exposure but no symptoms. So, ang dami, 6,321. Magkaroon ka lang ng isang ka-opisina or isang ka-church na confirmed case kahit wala kang symptom, bilang ka dito. Kaya marami. Ayan, ang recovered natin, ibig sabihin sila yung positive swab, tas negative na, yan, 42 sila. And then, unfortunately, we have 78 deaths from for, from confirmed cases. So, naka-highlight dito na from confirmed cases kasi maaaring meron tayong deaths from PUIs na wala pang test results or 
meron tayong deaths din na pwedeng hindi rin sa COVID. So until we get the official test results, we cannot count them here. Ayan na. So ito, according to the NCOV tracker, we have 3,303 tests conducted. No, Napaka um, controversial ng statement na to. So sinabi ko ay dapat 3,303 people on whom tests were conducted on whereas a test may be done multiple times whereas a test may yield different results whereas or as para siyang kontrat. <laughs> kasi etong 3303 tao to no hindi siya tests conducted kasi one person may receive a lot of tests kasi mino monitor kung kailan siya magre-recover okay yan yun so etong isang graph na nasa ncov tracker natin ito yung mga age group ng confirmed cases natin here we can see na ang majority ng ating kaso ay nasa age bracket of 50 to 69 years of age. Yung color blue po, yun yung mga males. So, mas parami tayong kalalakihan na nadadiagnose with COVID-19. Okay. So, meron din tayong mga kabataan na may COVID-19, ano? pero talagang mas marami tayong nasa age of 50 to 69. Ayan, ito naman ay ang place of residence ng mga confirmed cases natin. So, huwag natin intindihin ito na sa taas dahil number one, nakat siya. At number two, hindi siya masyadong malaki ang contribution. So, marami ang from Quezon City. Yes, that's my city. Kasi siguro dahil malaki ang QC. No? Ito ang pinakamalaking city. Tapos doon, San Juan, then Manila, Pasig, Makati, Davao, Mandalu, yung city where ship is located, and Taguig. So, yan. Okay. Pag-usapan naman natin ang virus. So, ang tawag sa kanya, so, isa galing siya sa um, family of coronavirus. Alam niyo ba kung bakit corona ang tawag? Tinan mo naman yan. Diba? Hindi ba siya yung parang corona? Crown of thorns ni Jesus Christ. Mayroon sa mga speculous na ganyan. Kaya siya tawag na coronavirus. So, saan ba nang galing tong virus na to? Ito, okay, hindi ito super, super sure. Like I said, it is a dynamic uh, study. But nung um, in-explore nila yung, di, uh, yung, ano, yung genetics ng, uh, ng virus, it had a lot in common with bats. No? 80% yung, kap yung oh, okay. kapareho nila sa... Uh, Sa bats. So, ang theory is it already existed in bats and then it mutated to be able to jump from uh, one animal to an intermediary host. So, ano ba yung intermediary host? Siya yung magpapasa sa humans. Nung MERS, ang intermediary host ay camel. Nung SARS, civet cat. At ngayon, inisip nila pangolin dahil ang dami nito sa China. Ang cute niya actually. Yun, tapos nun, nalipat na siya sa humans either by close contact or eating it. Kasi nga, dun sa Wuhan market, if you see some YouTube videos, meron tayong uh, nakikita na wildlife are being sold alive or dead. No? So, maaaring doon nagkaroon ng um, first contact, especially yung mga unang kaso na galing sa Wuhan, meron talaga silang prolonged contact with the market or even visits to the market. Okay, let's talk about transmission. So, <clears throat> the primary, primary mode of transmission is really from respiratory secretions. But it is more complicated than that. So, respiratory secretions or droplets can be Small droplets or large droplets. So large droplets, because they are heavy, they fall to the ground near you, near the person. And then when they fall to the ground and the fluid around them evaporates, the aerosols can exist at a low height. Okay? Yung mga small aerosols can be projected far in front of you. And there are certain mechanisms of these aerosols moving far. So, sa pananalita, pwede ka na magtalsik, di ba? Nakita na kayong taong talsik laway. 
kapag ikaw ay kumanta or sumigaw, like what was postulated that happened in the Sindron Chin Church in Korea, dahil they always sing for hours on end, yung, so, yung, 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 yung mga aerosols mo ay uh, nag-travel. Lalo na kapag umubo, lalo na kapag bumahin. So kita mo, meron ditong velocity at uh, rate of uh, distance of travel ng mga aerosols. So ang question, paano ba ito nalilipat sa tao? Kailangan ang aerosol ay, or droplet, ay mayroong direct contact with your mucous membrane. Ano bang mucous membrane mo? Ilong, bibig, mata, genital areas, puwet, yung parang, yung, yung basak. Okay? Yan ang mga bagay ng mucous membrane. So, pwede siyang ma-spray diretso sa'yo. Okay? Kung ma-inhale mo siya, diretso yun sa baga mo. So, here makikita natin how the width of an aerosol and where it travels with you. So, an, an, in your body pa lang. So, ano yung sinasabi naman yung mga tao na bakit kailangan ko maghugas ng kamay? Okay? So, infection can also occur if ako, bumahin ako sa mesa, sa telepono, sa ballpen na ginagamit sa bangko, inubuhan ko yun. Ang susunod na gagamit ng ballpen na yun ay pwede makakuha ng droplets na yun sa kamay niya. At you know, sometimes makati yung mata mo, ang sarap kamutin, or nag-cover ka ng sarili mong bibig dahil umubo ka, na-inhale mo na yung droplets galing dun sa inanimate object na yun. So, ang conversation naman ng how to prevent this, ay ko-cover din yung Doc Jello kasi important din yun. How are you sure na malinis ang mga bagay sa palipaligid mo? Or disinfection. So, next topic yun na. Okay. So, ngayon. Ngayon, kunyari, pumasok na yung droplet sa katawan ko. Ano mangyayari? So, ito yung kitaw natin, pathophysiology of disease. Explain ko lang sa'yo yung overview. Okay? Ito yung response ng katawan mo. So, ang virus... So, ang coronavirus, papasok yan sa iyong katawan. Para, it's very, very similar to how HIV infects a cell. Meron siyang binding with the, with the cell na papasukan niya. Ipapasok niya yung cell contents niya, yung viral RNA niya sa cytoplasm nung cell na infect niya. After which, magkoconjoin yung kanilang RNA papasok sa nucleus, magpo-form ng protein, at magpa-viral budding. Okay? Yun yun. Par Exactong parang ganun. Iba lang yung mga tawag sa mga cells na yun. Ngayon, ang problema, <clears throat> um, kapag ang infected cell ay na-recognize ng immune system ng katawan mo, mag pwede kang magkaroon ng viral response phase of the early infection Ibig sabihin nito, maaring mak ano yun, ma ma ma, 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 ma overcome ng katawan mo ang infection. Pero kapag ang immune system mo ay nagrun overdrive using the host inflammatory response phase, doon tayo magkakaproblema. So explain ko mas mas maigi yon ha. Sorry mas malabo. Ayan. So, ito yung sabi ko kanina, ang coronavirus, papasok sa cell, mag-replicate ka, lalabas siya, magiging a new virus. However, the, the virus-infected cell or the virus has antigens in its body. Yung mga immune system ng katawan mo, na ang trabaho nila ay awayin ang anumang infected cell sa katawan, isipin na, oy may problema tong cell na to, patay natin siya, can run into overdrive they may produce cytokines, yun ang tawag namin doon, cytokines, yung mga IL, IL-1, IL-6, DNF, super daming mga, mga uh, proteins and enzymes that can cause the body to react differently. What's going to happen when that happens? Magkakaroon tayo ng inflammation. Okay? So, if I were to uh, make it something like in HIV, para siyang nag-iris. Okay? Iba meron tayong inflammatory, ah? immune response inflammatory syndrome. 
parang ganun ang nangyayari sa cytokine storm ng COVID-19. See? So, meron tayong mga pro-inflammatory cytokines. So, nag-gather lahat sila dito sa lungs at ang nangyayari sa lungs ay para siyang in-invade ng kung ano-anong bagay. Nagkakaroon ng flooding, proteinaceous fluid gathers, and alam mo naman na ang lungs mo is the site of oxygen exchange of blood. So, kung nalulunod ang baga mo sa proteinaceous fluid, because of the inflammatory response of the cytokine storms, walang oxygenation na magaganap. So, hirap ka kumuha ng oxygen pag nag-otosat ka, ang baba. So, hindi mo na-achieve ang 90% and above oxygenation mo dahil nakaharang ang fluid, hindi siya maka-oxygenate ng blood. Ang mga otosat ng mga tao mababa, kailangan silang ma-intubate. Yan. Yan ang simpleng definition. Okay. So, ano naman ang manifestations nito in the person? So, incubation period, the mean is 4 days. No? Sabi nila, 2 to 7 days after exposure. Pero pwede siyang humaba up to 14 days. The mean duration of viral shedding, ibig sabihin, nagka-COVID ako. Pero pwede pa rin akong mag-shed ng uh, COVID, uh, ah, COVID um, coronavirus RNA up to 20 days sa stool, sa secretions ko. Pero dito nagkakaroon kami ng problema, hindi lahat ng viral shedding is infectious. So hindi natin alam yung mga, na na, yung mga kinulture sa mga inanimate objects na, oy may RNA dito ng corona, makakakos pa yun ng virus o hindi. So hindi natin alam yun, we don't know. 20 days, up to 20 days it can last, okay? In the China study of 181 cases, they found out that symptoms will develop in someone who is positive within 11.5 days. So, sa second week of infection or exposure, lumalabas yung sintomas ng ubo, lagnat, hirap sa paghinga, etc. Very small proportion of the population lang yung two days, within two days, pag ma-manifest na. Gano, ka, gano naman kalaki ang uh, apektadong populasyon sa, when it comes to the illness severity. So, majority is no symptoms or mild pneumonia lang, 81%. Ang severe, 14%. Ang critical is 5%. Okay. Ang case fatality naman, or 11%, ang namamatay sa mga critical. Sa Wuhan, 2.3%. The rest of China, 0.7%. In Italy, it was 7.2%. And in South Korea, it's low. Naisip nila, baka dahil mas matanda kasi yung population ng may COVID sa Italy, 64%. Whereas sa Korea, majority ng may COVID doon na hospital ay in their 40s, kaya mababa. Also, dito very important yung tinatawag nating denominator. So, ang denominator is the total number of people with coronavirus. Sa so, Korea, they do 100,000 tests per day. Hindi ko alam kung tama yung number ko. Pero ang dami nilang tinetest. So, the greater your denominator is, and if your deaths are steady, syempre, mas konti yung percentage mo ng case fatality rate, di ba? Pero kunyari tayo, ang test lang natin ay ilan ba? 3,000. Tapos ang namatay natin ay 60. Edi ang taas ng ating case fatality rate. Kasi hindi naman lahat tinetest natin. Okay? Gusto ko lang malaman nyo yun. Huwag kayong maniwala sa percent ng hindi mo inaalam ang numerator and denominator. Gets? Okay. Oh, ayon sa fresh guidelines natin, in three studies, ito yung most common signs and symptoms ng isang taong may COVID-19. Number one talaga is lagnat. Okay? So, na 83 to 98% of patients will have fever. Next is cough. Majority is dry cough, pero meron din akong nakita na 27% will present with um, 
productive cough. Shortness of breath is also uh, predominant. Muscle ache. Kasi nga, para siyang trangkaso daw ang pakiramdam. Pero OA na trangkaso. Ang sakit na talaga ng katawan. Interestingly, may GI symptoms din tayo. We have diarrhea, nausea, vomiting, and um, also there's uh, anecdotal reports of anosmia or hindi makaamoy and disgisha or parang nawawala ng panasa. So, konti lang yon, konti lang. Predominant talaga yung ano, fever, cough, and shortness of breath. Okay? So, ito. This is a um, <clears throat> parang comparison of symptomatology between survivors and non-survivors in a meta-analysis. So, sa mga nag-survive, halos pareho lang pala yung kanilang fever. May cough sila lahat. This niya. And, uh, pero, um, hindi nalalayo yung onset ng sepsis and ng acute respiratory distress syndrome sa kanila. Medyo napaaga lang ng 1 to 2 days dito sa survivors. Siyempre, sa mga non-survivors, ito na magkakaroon sila ng komplikasyon of having acute cardiac injury, kidney injury, secondary infection, and death. Pero if you look at it, hindi masyadong nagkakalayo ang kanilang symptomatology. Okay. So ito yung kinakwento ko, ARDS. This is an X-ray series of someone, unfortunately, 72-year-old female from the U.S. who developed acute respiratory distress syndrome. So, its appearance in the x-ray is kind of classic, no? Fluffy infiltrates. Hanggang mag-white out siya dito. So, the white stuff that you see is actually fluid. Because in the x-ray, you want to see black. Black means air. And like what I said earlier, the, the alveoli or the lung cells are drowning in proteinaceous fluid. Therefore, oxygenation does not happen. Okay. So, ito, obviously, na-intubate na si... Ito, 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 na yung, ito na yung tube. Intubate na siya. <clears throat> Yan. So, uh, what are the risk factors for having severe COVID in our patients? So, number one, age. Age more than 55. Number two, underlying pulmonary disease. Um, they say that they, they notice that smokers who have COPD or emphysema might have a more severe disease outcome if they have COVID. Cardiovascular disease, hypertension, diabetes, immunocompromised. So itong, this is where HIV falls into, yung immunocompromised. And pag-uusapan ni Doc Louie um, on another session, Ano ba ang kinaspecial ng isang taong may HIV sa COVID? Special ba sila o hindi? Ano ba nangyayari? Yan. So, ipark natin yung mga questions natin with regards to HIV. Pagdating sa session ni Dr. Louie Ocampo of UNAIDS. Yan. So, ito rin. Kapag ang physical exam findings mo ay hinihingal siya. RR of more than 24. Tachycardic. Heart rate of more than 125, low O2 sat on room air. So, kaya nakaupo lang ako rito. Yung O2 sat ko, di ba dapat above 92 yan? Sila below 90. Yan, baka may, may possibility ng risk na meron silang severe disease. And if you do your labs, you, ito yung mga um, um, signs, no? Na baka mag-progress tayo into severe disease. Mataas ang D-dimer kasi sila, ito yung mga um, labs which will show you na mataas ang uh, may possibility of cytokine storm. D-dimer, CPK, CRP, ito yung mga inflammatory markers mo, LDH. Tapos, surprisingly, mababa ang WBC or normal ang WBC in someone who has infection and then yung lymphocyte niya, mataka. Okay? Ferritin also and platelet count. Yun. <coughs> Next. Yan. So, Ito yung mortality rate by age. Uh, we've seen this in the news also, no? Na if you are above a certain age group, the chances of you dying from COVID is actually higher. 
compared to those who are younger. It's not saying na hindi nagkaka mortality kapag bata. Meron pa din. I mean, people of the age of 20 have died from COVID. Pero mas malakas talaga yung chance kapag you are older. Okay. Um, this is one of the classic itsura ng CT scans ng isang taong may COVID. We will see ground glass appearance of the, um, the posterior of the lungs. So, ground glass is basag na glass. Okay? This is also seen in PCP. No? Pneumocystis carinae. Girovetchi pneumonia. Yeah. So, minsan sa mga institution na wala pang test for COVID, nag-CT scan sila para magkaroon sila ng clue kung COVID ba to or hindi. And if they see na yung labs nila indicate high risk for COVID, they will treat as COVID. Okay, let's go to diagnosis. So, ito yung is interesting din malaman. No, paano ba malaman kung isang tao ay may um, COVID? Ito yung test na ginagamit natin as of now. No? Ito yung RT-PCR, reverse transcriptase PCR. So, real-time PCR. Um, there are a lot of steps. Sabi nga ng RITM, hindi madali no, mag-PCR uh, mag to know if isang tao ay may COVID kasi you have to in so pag binigay mo yung iyong um, swab mesopharyngeal swab uh, or oropharyngeal swab they have to inactivate the virus Malakada. hello pamute po hello <laughs> Okay, sorry. Yan. So, you have to inactivate the virus to make sure that it does not infect the lab and where the lab is located. This actually is one of the longer steps in uh, PCR. Uh, I was told it takes about four hours to do this step. And then, they will do, it's a two-step process. They will do screening and then the confirming before they release it. So, people often ask, meron namang ibang mga test. Ba't natin pwede gamitin yung test na yun? So, pag-uusapan natin yan today also. Ayon sa PISMID, the diagnosis of COVID is really um, using RT-PCR. Okay? Nagagawa ito ngayon sa RITM and sa mga sub-national labs of San Lazaro, uh, PGH, Vicente Soto, and SPMC. But I think RITM can do 1,000, 900 tests a day while the sub-national labs can only do 300 tests a day. Um, next, ano tong sinasabing rapid diagnostic kits? O ba sobrang parang HIV siya, parang viral load versus rapid test. Yun yung kinocompare nila ngayon. So, syempre, mas gusto mo yung viral load, di ba, versus rapid test. Kung gusto mo ng mas maagang diagnosis. Kasi, ang rapid test, because it measures IgG and IgM, we all know that it takes time for the body to produce antibodies. No? For the IgM, kahit IgM siya, it takes about 5 to 10 days. So, ang iniisip natin, if you want to diagnose COVID early, Kunyari, on, itong, itong taong to, inubo, nilagnat. Day one, day one ng symptoms. Gusto ko na siyang malaman kung may COVID. Parang ang hirap gamitin ang antibody test. Bakit? Kasi pag nag-negative yung antibody test mo, magkakaroon ka ba ng peace of mind na, ay, negative ka. Sige, huwag tayo mag-quarantine. Magtabi pa tayo sa kama. ba Ang hirap nun. So, um, I think it has a place in our diagnosis of COVID. Kailangan mo lang malaman paano siya gamitin. Okay. So, itong ating COVID-approved IgG, IgM test ay in na siya ng FDA ng March 30 at ang kanilang sensitivity ay 88.86% and specificity is 90.63%. So, ang sensitivity ng isang test, ibig sabihin, it is a true positive and then ang specificity is it is a true negative. 
Okay. So, ito yung bilin ng PSM ID sa paggamit ng mga rapid tests natin. Number one, only FDA-approved kits should be used. May listahan yan ang DOH. It's accessible doon sa website at sa ating Viber chat group. Number two, a COVID-19 antibody test cannot be used as a standalone test to definitely diagnose COVID-19 and cannot be used for mass testing. The COVID-19 rapid diagnostic test can only be used in people who had onset of symptoms for at least five days. O, di ba? Napag-usapan natin yan kasi kailangan mag-manifest muna yung katawan mo ng antibody. Five days of symptoms para lumabas yung IgM and then 21 days of symptoms for IgG. So dahil most tests include IgM and IgG, you can use it na by day 5 of illness. Okay? Anyone who tests positive for IgM should be tested with an RT-PCR to confirm the positive test. Iba parang HIV test lang. Pag nag-screening ka, kailangan mo daw mag-confirmatory. Para sure. Diba? Okay. A negative IgM test does not rule out COVID-19. So, kung ang pasyente ay may sintomas na parang COVID, pero yung, yung rapid test ay negative, go with clinical. Don't rely on lab alone. I-isolate mo pa rin siya, mag-quarantine measures tayo, tapos magpa-confirm tayo using the RT-PCR. If the test result only, ano, IgG only positive individuals without RT-PCR should be rated as presumptive as COVID and not be officially counted as confirmed unless there is a further validation test in the future or if PRNT. Ah, okay, sige. So, ang asymptomatic patient, di ba, majority sa atin is will have mild symptoms lang. So, kunyari, kunyari ako, kunyari ako, nagka-COVID na pala ako, tapos nag-mild lang ako. So, ngayon, I feel okay. Eh, nag-ano ako, nag-rapid test ako. Ang lumabas sa rapid test ko, IgG positive only. Maaaring ito ay dahil sa natapos na yung production ko ng IgM antibodies at IgG din lang ang pinaproduce ko. So, ang tawag sa akin ay presumptive past COVID. So, hindi ako ibibilang sa confirmed unless mayroon akong future validation test. Ang problema kasi is kapag PR, pinisiar ako, baka negative din ako. So, I will be put on hold unless may further validation test in the future. Is If a patient is symptomatic, an, uh, okay, kaya re, IgG positive lang, pero may symptoms ako. Weird, di ba? Kasi dapat pati IgM ko positive din. Gagawa ngayon ako ng RT-PCR. Tapos, ikakwarantin pa rin ako. Okay. Pag ang pasyente ay asymptomatic, meaning, wala talaga. Dead ma. Walang reason para itest ka. No need to test using RT-PCR. Next. The IgG antibody can be used as an adjunct tank test to clear quarantine persons who remain asymptomatic at 14 days post-discharge. The presence of antibodies typically indicates viral clearance. If the IgG is positive, the patient can be released from self-quarantine. If the IgG is negative, a repeat RT-PCR test should be performed. Okay. Only medical doctors can prescribe and interpret the use of antibody-based test kits. The test kits will not be available over the counter. So, atong mga, ang alam ko, hindi ko lang kung magano siya, pero yung kay Dr. Destura, parang 1-3 or 1-6 siya ibebenta kapag na-approve siya ni FDA. Pero, I think si Sir ay RT-PCR. Anyway, yun yung mga kits to. Next. Kung ikaw ay working as a, a, a part of a COVID hospital, ito usually yung mga tests na nire-recommend ng mga team, mga, mga IDS ninyo. So, CBC, CREA, AST, ALT, Magnesium, Galsium, LDH, Ferritin, CRP, and Perucalcitonin, 
prothrombin D dimer, ABG, blood culture, tests for influenza, kasi pwede tayo magkaroon ng co-infection pa din, ETA or BAL, culture and sensitivity, because you may have bacterial co-infection also, chest x-ray, high resolution chest CT scan, and ECG. Okay, dahil tayo ay usually primary care health workers, ito ang pinaka-importanting malaman. Kapag low risk ang pasyente mo, wala kang dapat gawin. Kailangan mo ay mag-advise ng strict home isolation or quarantine in a designated COVID facility. Okay, malaki ang role natin bilang screening committee, bilang Actually ito, I want you to know, pag sinabing frontline, siya yung una. Ang frontline is the community healthcare worker. Tayo, primary care. Yung unang lalapitan ng pasyente kasi ang hospital natin, ang mga COVID referral centers is the last line of defense. Sila yung huling chance ng pasyente para um, mag-survive. Kayo ang frontline you will have to stand ground. So, kayo ang makakapag-screen ng pasyente. Okay? So, pag walang risk, kung mild disease lang siya, mild symptoms, you advise home isolation or quarantine. Okay. So, ito naman, just some idea on what the possible treatment regimens are and where they work on, here they are. So, ang mga postulated, ha? kasi wala talagang solid treatment for COVID-19, I assure you, lahat pinag-aaralan pa kasi bago tong sakit na to eh. So, hindi ta kami makapag-suggest ng anything. So, if you hear chloroquine and hydro hydroxychloroquine, they work here in preventing the, the, the entry of the, the virus in the cell and forming this um, envelope around it. Lopinavir-ritonavir is a protease inhibitor that is familiar to all of you being used in HIV. They, are, they theorize that as a protease inhibitor, it will inhibit the proteolysis or the formation of effective proteins into making a functional virus. So, isi-stop nila yung pag gupit, gupit Okay? Remdesivir is a drug manufactured uh, for Ebola. Okay? So, it is um, puro, puro in vitro studies pa lang ang lumalabas tungkol sa kanyang ability to inhibit RNA-dependent RNA polymerase. So ngayon, they're going to see if it works on people. And then we have here also monoclonal antibodies and convalescent plasma. So MAB, monoclonal antibodies, is one of the things that they are looking into. Convalescent plasma is the plasma from someone who recovered from COVID-19 ita-transfuse ang plasma niya sa isang tao may severe disease. So, we're hoping that this is because eventually, people will, people, if you think about it, if you have a virus, you're supposed to be, um, to develop immunity towards it, right? Yun yung rational ng, ng pagkakaroon ng isang viral infection. Pero we cannot say for sure kasi dito sa COVID because it is a new thing. So, they are doing trials now of transfusing convalescent plasma in severe patients. I think the first institute to do it in somewhere in Texas. Okay? Yan. Next. So, um, can you see this? Okay. So, this is the... This is what, you, what we all need, no? This is the algorithm for... COVID-19 referral and triage because as I said, we are all frontliners and we should see, we should be able to screen. Okay. So if you have someone presenting with 
fever or respiratory symptoms, cough, difficulty of breathing, look at the other symptoms that you know might um, be red flags for COVID, no? Fatigue, myalgia, sore throat, diarrhea. Um, first, you will offer support by existing mechanisms such as a DOH COVID hotline. 1555. Dial 1555. You have, we have agents who will answer your call. If you need to talk to a doctor, the calls will be elevated to the doctor's on call. So I myself am a doctor on call for the DOH COVID hotline. So tawag muna. Wag tatakbo sa hospital dahil I guarantee you papawiin kayo kung hindi kayo intubatable. Okay. If you are in a primary or secondary facility, you should do initial assessment and management. So, consider, meron ba siyang comorbidities, high blood, diabetes, immune compromise, age of 60 years old and above, risk factor yan. Okay? So, when will you refer to a COVID-19 designated hospital? So, ano ba yung COVID-19 designated hospital? Yun ba yung tatlo? I think referral center yun eh. I think COVID-19 designated hospital are still the other hospitals. So, this is, I think, Lourdes here in Shaw Boulevard in Mandaluyong is the COVID-19 designated hospital of the MVP group of hospitals. So, Makati Med Cardinal, ang COVID nila na hospital is Lourdes. So, there should be a COVID-19 designated hospital in your area. Ire-refer nyo sila doon kapag the O2 sat is below or equal to 93 at room air, breathing more than 30 breaths per minute, low blood pressure, and altered mental status. Pag mild case lang siya, pag wala sila na itong ito, 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 you can advise community care and isolation. So, pwede siyang i-advise ng home isolation. Home isolation is a stricter term for quarantine kasi isolated ka talaga because you are now a probable COVID case. Okay? So, hiwalay na kwarto, hiwalay na gamit, hindi dalabas ng bahay, ng kwarto, hiwalay talaga sa ibang tao or stay in a designated facility. If the mild case will deteriorate or if you assess the person to have a high risk of severe disease, then you should ad admit to a COVID-19 hospital. So COVID-19 hospital, it test sila doon, it, it, um, magbagawa tayo ng mga lab test and x-ray and we will monitor the uh, severity. And of course, meron tayong criteria for admission. Okay. Yon ang ating algorithm for referral and triad. So these are all part in the um, of the PISMID guidelines. I think they will be out for distribution soon. Okay, next. So with regards to other treatment modalities, I am happy to share that the Philippines is part of the WHO Solidarity Trial. So, ito ay parang multi-country effort to explore the success of treating COVID-19 using four most promising therapies, chloroquine, hydroxychloroquine, oh, nakita mo na yun sa ating chart kanina, remdesivir, lopinavir, and lopinavir with interferon beta. So, ang outcomes na hahanapin ay discharge, mortality, duration of hospital stay, and needing oxygenation or ventilation. So, part tayo niyan, yung mga IDS doctors natin ay nag enroll na ng mga pasyente sa trial na ito. Okay. So, this is just, I think this is my last slide. This is just, uh, it's going to be a preview of what Doc Jello will um, talk about more on his session is how do we foresee that all of what we are doing, especially yung ating um, quarantine and lockdown is actually going to help us. 
So, maaga pa tayo ngayon, no? It only has been one month since we had our extreme measures for um, for keeping COVID-19 under control. We can't, we cannot say just yet, but it should be maintained. Hindi pwedeng pagdating ng April 14 ay para tayo magpa-party sa kalsada. Hindi po ganun yun. Unti-unti lang sigurong iaangat ang mga stricter quarantine measures. And I'm not even sure this is what they're going to do because if you ask me, I think we should be in quarantine for two months. But that's just me. Okay, I know the economics of the country will suffer, etc., etc. But we should not let go of any gains that we have achieved in this first month. So, ang tawag dyan is the hammer and the dance. We are experiencing the hammer right now. Strict isolation, quarantine measures. The dance will follow and it is upon us to be able to um, maintain. Nasa sa atin yan. Diyos ko nakakatakot. Parang ayoko yata i ng quarantine. Anyway, please be the representative of your community in making sure that we still maintain social distancing and quarantine measures and safety for everyone. I cannot overemphasize the need to wash your hands. Please wash your hands whenever you do anything. Um, I would wear a mask outside. I would, you know. It, it doesn't matter if cotton mask yan, surgical mask yan. I would rather that everybody is safe. Um, but of course, please donate also PPE to your healthcare workers. Okay, if you are part of the COVID team in your hospital, please make sure that you know how to don means putting on and how to doff means removing properly your PPEs and call out any breaks of PPEs in among your colleagues. You can help save a life. I think that's it. These are some of the questions. First, um, what is the management done or being done for PUI and those who are COVID-19 positive? Ang um, PUI ay uh, nasa bahay. <laughs> Walang PUI na naka-admit. Pag may PUI na naka-admit, kukurutin ko sa singit dahil kinukuha ang, ang bed space para sa severe case. So, PUI, iba na yung, iba na yung terms natin, di ba, guys? Yes. Presumptive COVID ba yun? Mild COVID? Ano, wait lang. I, I review ko nga. Okay. Our terms. So, ang PUI is a non-COVID case. Okay? So, ay, sorry, mali, mali. PUI, mild, is a, who has not yet been tested, is a suspect. Pero meron ka rin PUI, severe and critical. So, I guess the answer is, depende kung ano ang stage ng patient. So, kung meron kang PUI, meaning nagmamanifest ng symptoms, pero hindi pa natetest, pag kinakailangan i-admit, kunyari, RR greater than 30, O2 sat mababa, naka-admit yan sa ospital, at minamanage as if COVID. At this point, if we have a gut feel na COVID siya, based on symptoms and ancillary tests, minamanage as COVID siya. So, paano minamanage? Depende sa doktor yan. Number one, supportive care. Oxygenation should be upheld, should be supported. Either naka, naka face mask siya, BiPAP, CPAP, or intubate to raise the oxygenation. That's number one. If they have bacterial co-infection, treat din yun. If they have uh, viral co-infections in treating you. Now, we have uh, an algorithm as to what investigational drug to use, whether it's chloroquine, hydroxychloroquine, remdesivir, 
monoclonal antibodies. Yun. So, yun ang ginagamit. Meron kaming algorithm for that. Number two, is any vaccine available? Wala pa po. Any prophylaxis? Wala pa po. Please do not use chloroquine or hydroxychloroquine as prophylaxis. I cannot mention this enough. We have seen people with arrhythmias die because they self-medicated with chloroquine from a fish medication. Tama ba yun? Gamot sa isla na chloroquine, ininom, nagkaroon siya ng tersad de poin from a prolonged QR interval. Ang linit Ito, ng aquarium QR. yun. Correct, correct, diba? So, no, 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 no. Don't do that. Okay? Ay, so, walang okay. profi. Yes. Uh -oh, talking about prophylaxis kasi mamaya may lalabas. So, isabay na natin siguro. What about daw yung uh, anong benefits if meron kang flu vaccine? Well, kanya nga, regardless of what you have, aren't we all advised to get the flu shot every year? So for me, if I think about it, it prevents me from getting a flu co-infection. No, if I had COVID, COVID na lang intindihin ko, hindi yung I may COVID tsaka flu siya. Eh di mas papangat yung aking ano, uh, clinical course kasi mayroon akong dual infection. So among my PLHIV um, patients, I do advise that everybody should get their required vaccine. Alam niyo na yan, di ba? Everybody should get a flu shot, pneumonia, Kung may meningo kayo, bigay nyo na rin yun. Um, para meron tayong ample protection for the things that the vaccine takes care of. Because you can have strep pneumonia with COVID. You can have influenza H1N1 with COVID. It'll give you a, a darker course. Next. So next. Susceptibility of medtechs being infected with COVID in yes. living specimen. True, true, true. That is true. That's why when you do your specimen collection for your NPSOPS, please, PPE galore, you are handling a live virus. So, pwede kayong mahawa doon. Even those next... working in the lab also. Kaya... Diba, strict ang, ano, ang DOH and RITM sa pag-accredit ng mga labs. Kasi if your place does not have the adequate biosafety requirements, hindi mo ma-assure na hindi ka makakapag... Yun, parang ma-spiderman yung, ano, yung mga medtech natin. Bigla silang ma-infect, diba? Yun. The next, okay. Is the government considering mm -hmm. gene expert yeah. in doing testing for it to That's be more a faster? yes. The gene expert is a re it's part of the diagnostic strategy. It is, I think, on its way. Uh, I don't know when, pero part yan. Because the gene expert will give us diagnosis in 45 minutes. So they are working on that, for sure. Problema lang ngayon kasi is, di ba kailangan natin ng cartridge sa gene expert? So agawan din sa cartridge. So hindi lang reagent ang problema, pati cartridge. Pero yes to gene expert. Okay, next. Are there already studies that state how long the virus from aerosols can thrive in inanimate object that was exposed? So, that's a question for Doc Jello. <laughs> Abangan nyo na lang ang susunod na kabanata. <laughs> Part yun ang kanyang lecture. Okay. Tapos next is about inflammatories or anti-inflammatories. I think... um. Uh, the, uh, one one institution is looking into this. That's why they are uh, using, I think, what are they using? Atorvastatin. They're, so atorvastatin is an anti-cholesterol with anti-inflammatory characteristics. That's one part of a study. That's one study being done. But as of now, we cannot. Things may sound great in theory, but they all have to be um, used in experiments with with in vitro animals and humans, no? So, may ginagawa na dyan for that. Okay, next. I think this is very important. The person who recovered from COVID, can he has a chance of being infected again? Um, meron akong narinig 
chismisin. Pero meron kasi yung cases na negative sila. Tapos, ano ba yun? Ano ba yun? Parang, hindi ko okay. The answer is, I don't know. I don't know. Pero if you, if you, if, if, if you think of the, the theoretical of mutating viruses, then that's a yes. Right? If a virus mutates, then you can get infected from the same virus again. Pero honestly, don't listen to me. I don't know. I don't know the answer. Okay. Would you agree, Doc Kate, na sasabihin natin, although gumaling na siya, negative na siya dun sa test niya, so similar sa sinabi mo nga kanina, um, still we need to be cautious and practice yung ating mga right. uh, safety measures. Oo, oh, kasi alam mo, if you think about it, there are two schools of thought. Eh. One is, you develop immunity to a virus, right? Dapat you should be fine. Kaya nga nag-donate ng plasma yung mga, yung mga tao. Eh. Pangalawa, what if mag-mutate yung virus, di ba? And you get reinfected. And then, you're right, Rad. We should be careful na lang. No, let's just still practice being careful. Okay. So there's... We cannot answer those questions right now. It's too yeah. hard. So walang, walang time to celebrate. Let's <laughs> always be cautious. Until everything is clear. Okay. Last two. Is it possible that the community develops herd immunity against COVID? Yeah. Uh, yun, they're, they're looking into that also kasi pinostulate din yan ng Australia na parang dapat may herd immunity. Pero people are <laughs> warning against having coronavirus parties because when you talk about herd immunity, it means people of in a certain group all have, I mean, most of them have COVID and they will semi-infect in their <laughs> Alam mo yun, parang magkakaroon ka ng immunity doon. Pero mahirap. It's, it's, it's delikado to, to advise that. But it's hopefully something we can see. Okay. And then last, what is the role of vitamin C and zinc? Tapos, when it comes to vitamin C, ano yung prescribed? Is it 500 milligram or 1,000 milligram per day? Ay, ano ba yan? Um, <laughs> parang wala, walang role for what to boost your immunity, yun ba yun? Kasi, if you talk about zinc and chloroquine, that's a different thing. No? People with who are using chloroquine as a medication for um, COVID are advised to have zinc because it facilitates the entry of chloroquine into the cell, right? But if you're thinking of just having an immunity boost from vitamin C and zinc. Um, as in our last HTTP sessions on nutrition, um, hindi nila ma-recommend. But I think because zinc has a role in flu, flu um, prevention, parang boosting your immunity during flu, it won't hurt because it won't kill you either. So, if you want to take Conzeis or if you want to take Beroka, you are free to do so. But there will not be any recommendations for you to take that. Okay. Meron pa isa dito, Doc Hate. And I think it's also important. I've seen this uh, explanation in Dr. Edsel. Right? Uh, pag na-test ka na, so you're positive, you go through the management. But before they give you clearance to go out of the hospital, may Ilan yung required test pa bago ka ma-discharge? So, sa abroad, the practice is dalawa. Dalawang negative test. Tapos, dapat separated yung dalawang test by 24 to 48 hours. So, kaya rin, na-admit ako for 10 days. On my 10th day, na-swab ako negative. Okay. Isa pang negative swab sa isang araw. Pag dalawang negative na, okay, uwi na ako. Pero now... The DOH is recommending discharge after one swap. One. After one. Okay ka na. Okay. Thanks very much, Doc Kate. Wala na tayong ibang questions kasi ibang questions ninyo, as mentioned by Doc Kate, siya ay madidiscuss dun sa succeeding topics natin. So aside from this one, we still have three other topics. Um, Parting words, Doc okay. Kate. Parting words, kung meron ba kayong question na hindi ko nasagot, isulat nyo lang, i-collect ko ni Rad, tapos isitry natin siya sagutin sa susunod. Meanwhile, um, sa so mga frontliners and, and 
backliners dyan, maraming salamat for keeping all of us safe. Mag-ingat po kayo. Kailangan natin kayo forever. So mag-mask, mag-PPE, and if you need donations of PPE, tanungin nyo kay Rad kasi i- send ko sa kanila yung link ng Towns Foundation. So, nag-organize kami, nag-coordinate kami ng mga PPE delivery, lalo na kung heavy burden ang PUI, PUM, COVID, chanas-chanas sa inyo. Please, we need you guys to stay protected. Wash your hands. At pag-uwi sa bahay, mag-ingat po. Mag-anig kayo kay Doc Jello kung paano mag-disinfect bago umuwi ng bahay. Take care, everybody. One five 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 COVID hotline. Okay, thanks very much, Lokit, and thanks everyone for joining us. See you on our next session, that is April two. So, ang discussion for April two is about COVID and HIV. So, lahat ng tanong ninyo related dun sa COVID and HIV, HIV and COVID will be discussed there. And of course, topics about how to ensure yung continuum ng uh, ating uh, HIV care will also be discussed on April 2. So, see you on April 2. Um, hintayin nyo lang yung inyong mga link for the session. At the same time, kapag meron pa po kayong mga colleagues who are still interested to join, so please mag-register lang po sila. Okay, thank you very much and have a good day and be safe everyone.